Mr. Speaker, we cannot make killing of women a normal issue. It's unacceptable, Madam Speaker. And I want to tell you that any man who kills a woman is a weak man. He's a useless man. He's not worth being called a man, Mr. Speaker. That is the truth of the matter. Because, Mr. Speaker, and even to make it worse, you are killing a woman who has trusted you, who has loved you, loves you, a woman who has shown faith in you, then you dupe her, you take her to an Air, Airbnb, then you kill her there, Mr. Speaker. That is an animal, that's not a man. We must describe those ones as animals, not men, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm shocked that in 2024 we are speaking about this matter. Because I have not yet recovered from what happened in my county one time, Madam, Mr. Speaker, where a lady called Sharon, who was expectant, who was almost uh, at the delivery point, Mr. Speaker, was killed by people in a forest, instead of allowing her to deliver the baby in a, a matter of weeks, I think, or days, and she was killed, the child inside her was killed, I have never recovered from that shock. And Mr. Speaker, now it is becoming a norm. Mr. Speaker, if this matter is not arrested, and the people who do that kind of heinous act not, don't face serious consequences, Mr. Speaker, it will be taken as business as usual. Mr. Speaker, there is no life without women in this world. There is no human being who is walking in this world who has not come through a woman, Madam Speaker. We are all here courtesy of women. We are in this world courtesy of women. If there were no women, there is no world, there is no life, Mr. Speaker. And you have the audacity to kill those people, maim them, rape them. Mr. Speaker, unless we come together as leaders and as people and, and, and eradicate that matter, Madam, Mr. Speaker, I don't think we are going to reach far as a country. So in conclusion, Madam, Mr. Speaker, I want to say that I am fully behind the people who want to bring serious consequences to be faced by those people who are killing women. Why should you kill a woman? Why? What makes you kill a woman? Unless you have lost your head, unless you are a mad person. And you know, it's not a, even nowadays, it's not even about girls. I have seen old women being killed. I have seen middle-aged women being killed for reasons that we are unable to understand up to today. Mr. Speaker, it cannot be a sport. Killing a women can never become a sport. It must have consequences because those are human souls that we are losing every day. So, Mr. Speaker, in conclusion, I want to say that I remember there, were, there was legislation that was made in this house relating with gender violence. I don't, know that. I don't know why they are not being more harsher than this, Mr. Speaker. We need to come up with a legislation that says if you kill a woman, you should be killed. If you kill a man, you, you should pay just 100 camels. <laughs> yeah, that's all. That's enough for a man. But if you kill a woman, because a woman is a factory. A woman is the one who produces men. Now you are killing the people who are supposed to bring life to us. If you kill a woman, Mr. Speaker, you must be killed also. Or you must, felt, you must face the death penalty. That should be the minimum that you should face. With those few remarks, Mr. Speaker, I will again thank Madam Honorable Pasaris. She has brought a, she could not bring this motion a better day than today when we are celebrating Valentine. Sure. It's, a, it's the best day to discuss this matter, Mr. Speaker. Because many women have lost their lives through love. People they have trusted, people they have, you know, developed relationship with. So, so, Mr. Speaker, the House must rise to the occasion and the institutions that are mandated to take action, like the police, the DCI, must do everything possible to make sure that any man who hurts a woman, not only killing, who hurts a woman, must face the full force of the law, Mr. Speaker. I'm killing now. Any man who hurts a woman, Mr. Speaker, I'm going to support that legislation that it should be some of us you know let me not say mine because i know how i treat women i treat them very well so they should follow my example <laughs> hey you guys thank you uh, as i give uh, honorable Lachi, let me indicate that uh, i 
the screen is full of people who are not in the house. And please, uh, our clerks, clear the lists. And also, I'm not seeing on the screen the honorable women on the screen. So please key in if you want to speak on this. Meanwhile, let me give uh, honorable Lachi. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and Mr. Speaker, I also want to thank you so much because you have been one of those male champions that we have seen for many years on issues of women. As I stand to support this motion and to really, really appreciate my leader, Honorable Esther Pasaris, for bringing in this motion at a time when we talk of love, love that has become a dark love, love that has bring more darkness than the love we thought about, love that has removed the book of Timothy chapter 13 from our faces and given us something else. Mr. Speaker, in Kenya today we have robust laws. The framework is there on issues of gender. But on the 27th of January, Mr. Speaker, when women and men were coming out to just call upon the government to come in and see what is this that has just hit Kenya, that we can lose 10 women in January and more because we have more who we have not, uh, we don't know whether they, are, they, they have